The first question is uh, for me. Uh, when he was making the decision to become a monk, it seems like from the film that he wasn't talking to a lot of people about that decision. Is that was that true? Has he talked to you a little bit about it? Um, uh, it was the summer of '84, and he called me. I was living in Paris at the time, and he said that he wanted to become a monk, and. Uh, it didn't surprise me because I knew that his, his study of Tibetan Buddhism was becoming more and more important to him. And since I'm sort of the practical one in the family, I said to him, so what will it cost you f to be a monk for a year? Like, wh wh what is this decision going to take to make happen? And he said something like $5,000 or something like that. And I called all of the members of our family and I said to them, we need to pool some resources to be sure that Nikki has no excuses to be able to back out of doing what he really wants to do. Because $5,000 is not a big enough sum of money that you should back out of what you really want to do. And so I called him back and it was 24 hours later and I said, I opened a bank account and there's $5,000 in the bank account to be sure that you can do what you want to do. And uh, but I had never heard before that he wanted to be a monk, and um, and he has been since then. And um, during the course of that time, as uh, Richard Gere, who many of you know is a big proponent of the Dalai Lama and Tibetan Buddhism and a, and a protector and an advocate for that situation, um, and therefore obvious choice to be included in the film, but he spoke about how you had been instrumental in 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 his being a monk and giving him counsel and so forth throughout. So that goes beyond the initial $5,000. That's a lot of communication over the years and the different things. It was funny because when we went to Long Beach where his holiness was doing a teaching and my father and I went there to be with Nikki for uh, the, the ceremony which his holiness named him an abbot. And, and, and to me, that uh, shooting at that ceremony was really very special because uh, that relationship between His Holiness and Chungla Rinpoche, Nikki's teacher, where you keep seeing them, like His Holiness sort of holding his hand, and, and his hand looked like sort of an old leather glove, and he just sort of, sort of slipping his hand into that warm uh, set of two hands of His Holiness were, were some of the most beautiful uh, footage in the entire film for me, because that relationship is so far outside of the traditional relationship that His Holiness has with other uh, monks or abbots or main leaders of the Tibetan Buddhism uh, structures. And uh, it, it was funny, we went into this, th 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 this, this hotel suite and uh, we, it was just supposed to be my father, Nikki, me, Chungla, and His Holiness. And all of a sudden, Richard Gere appeared and the next thing, as we were sort of being escorted in, you saw us sort of running down the corridor to the end. And we were all sort of sitting in the green room waiting. And all of a sudden, His Holiness was sort of standing in the hallway saying, where are they? Let's get this thing going. And so everyone <laughs> was sort of running down the hallway. And then Richard followed us. And it was sort of like, it was sort of a little bit inappropriate because uh, th this is considered an audience. And this is people who are invited to be part of the audience. And he just sort of, as such a celebrity, he just glommed on to us. So, <laughs> We're sitting there, and uh, and th it was all sort of very f formal, and everyone was doing all the pr proper ceremonial activities, and I was sort of outraged that Richard was there, and and it just seemed to me like uh, inappropriate, and and at the end, he gave me this huge compliment that ended up on the film that would never have ever, ever happened if it hadn't been for the fact that Richard <laughs> Gere was there and he spoke up and said this. And so it's always fascinating in life how these things uh, appear out of nowhere. Uh, so yes, well, it was a very special occasion. Everything happens for a reason. Um, but uh, I agree with you that that wonderful moment of, of, of uh, His Holiness touching Rinpoche's hand, and then, and other things, the the pulling on the nose, the long nose thing, uh, you know, his playfulness, well, for, and for it years. echoed Rinpoche too. The sense of humor, the the great sort of levity and and lightness, and and sort of happiness that's involved there. Yes, uh, he 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 always would tweak my brother's nose, and that was always sort of a special thing because he kept saying like, you know, we have these small 
uh, Tibetan noses, and you have this big, long, pointed nose, and so it was always sort of an issue, a, a sort of a, 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 a issue. And he would touch Nikki's nose, and and touching a monk's nose is so outside of the norm for His Holiness. <laughs> you don't have an, a clue of what we're talking about. This is like so inappropriate. And and um, I remember years ago, I had an audience with His Holiness, and my wife and I were there. And there's a picture of my wife and I sort of hugging him and holding us all together. And Nikki said, you would never see this in, in, in the Tibetan community. <laughs> We're all sort of standing there hugging each other. And, and it, you just don't do that. And right. so th 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 these, these moments are very, very unique and, and really reflective of, and I think that the, the, that the one of the basis of Nikki's relationship with His Holiness beyond Nikki's own accomplishments as a monk and as an abbot and uh, are the relationship that Nikki has with Chungla Rinpoche, because I think that you can really see this student-guru, student-teacher relationship that Nikki has done, which is truly remarkable, and it's one of my favorite parts of this movie, is that you can see this tremendous devotion to uh, be there for somebody, and his whole, and, 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 and Chungla is, Nikki is in, India. I, he was supposed to be here, but I'm here, and he's there, and he's at his monastery, and this Chung, Chungla Rinpoche has a little bit of a lung thing where he's on antibiotics, and it's always very problematic, but he's in his, I guess, early 90s at this point, and, 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 uh, and His Holiness is 80. I don't know if you saw in the New York Times, there's a very important article about, you know, is this the last Dalai Lama, and I think it's a very important issue because in the tradition, uh, when His Holiness dies, there's a transition to when he, the, it, you know, his advisors and people select the reincarnation, his, his reincarnation, and then he's got to grow up. And so there's a long transition between a dynamic Dalai Lama and the next dynamic moment of the Dalai Lama. And that, let's say it's a 20-year gap. Uh, and uh, that's a very sort of worrisome process within that world. Well, I just think that the movie was incredible in terms of exactly that, because um, your brother talks about uh, by by his teaching, but also by his example, and you can see the example of 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 his whole his sense of humor and his lightness, but his dedication, just it's beautifully captured. And I think that those very warm moments um, go to uh, sort of the proving the, that the choice was right for Nikki. And I, I just would ask you, it seems that he is totally at peace with his, uh, his decision. And, and he was very honest about the, the challenges. And then Richard Gere mentions the same challenges about the celibacy, living in the world, having, having real desires and attachments and so forth. But it seems that he is happy, that he is content, that he knows he's on the right path. Is that your feeling as his brother, that, he's, that he is? It is. I, I... I had, you know, uh, he's been a monk now for 31 years. He became monk in 84. And I felt that when, he, that there is this Geshe degree, which is what was what Richard mentioned, the fact that uh, Chungla Rinpoche was the uh, final debater with His Holiness for his Geshe degree. The Geshe degree is the equivalent of a doctorate of divinity. Nikki spent 14 years at that monastery in that tiny little room that we saw to prepare for that. And I had a feeling that after the Geshe degree, he was the third Westerner to ever have passed that degree, that he might stop being a monk. And this was 98 or something like that. And then now I really don't think he'll stop being a monk. I mean, I, I didn't ever think that he'd stop being, especially with a teacher who is not a monk anymore, that sort of, uh, you know, His Holiness has two brothers who are not monks anymore. So there, there is a culture that you can also be very, very vested and committed and not a monk. At this point, I think he will be a monk for the rest of his life. He's in his, uh, you know, he's 61, and I think that he's going to stay a monk for a while. Well, I, it's a beautiful film. If anybody have any questions, we do have to kind of wrap it up because of the next film coming up. But if anybody would like to make a comment or ask a question, right, right here. I have a comment. Uh, he said that with the amount of time that we have left to live in life, we should make the best use of it. And that really hit me. Very inspiring. A lot of a lot of very inspirational moments in the film. And oh, right here. Um, during those initial 13 years at the monastery, was he photographing, and how did he print and develop? Straightforward question. 
he he was photographing as it, as 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 it mentioned in the film he had this very complicated relationship with his camera where he had it hidden and he'd bring it out he'd take some pictures then he'd come back to the west with a couple of like rolls of film and they were developed here uh, he didn't trust the labs in india so he brought the film back to america and he was always scared that it might go through an x-ray machine and not be any good but actually it was they were all good but um it, it, it He's always photographed, and that's always been a very important part of. And, and I think that what's interesting is I think that when he speaks about Buddhism, it's he, he can when he speaks about it through photography, like through the difference between film and digital, and those kind of conversations. He really can talk about the human life and the and and the, and the challenges we go through through those kind of references. So I think it's it's, it's a very important part of who Nikki is. I, th I think it was beautiful the way that you pointed that out a couple of times, and he dealt with it as well, which is the, the, the sort of the apparent conflict between the attachment to photography and, and what the woman said, I can't remember who she was, about this amount of ego and creativity that's, you know, that's involved, which is against the idea of Buddhism and the selflessness and no self. So just a fascinating study of, of somebody going through this process and, uh, and finding their way and doing so much good and so many wonderful things. So, so thank you very, very much for coming out and talking. Thank to you us. for coming out. Thank you very much.